Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for a model, build and tactics review of the Legio Custodes Aquilon Terminator Squad armed with Fire Pikes and Solarite Power Talons by Forgeworld. So these are miniatures for the Horus Heresy 30k list, the Talons of the Emperor, and they are unsurprisingly an elite's choice in that list. What we're going to do in this review is I'm going to show you these three models. We're going to take a look at them, see how they look now they're built. I'm then going to talk about the quality of the kit and my build experience. Then I'm going to move on to do some size comparisons against other miniatures from the Heresy range before finally discussing the tactics and rules for using these miniatures in games of 7th edition Horus Heresy. So that's the plan. Well, as you can see, we've got the three. They're all identically armed with a fire pike and a solarite power talon. You get three miniatures in the set, which when I bought it, which was back in August 2017, it cost £49. It's a full resin kit, apart from the plastic bases, as you can see. And yeah, you pretty much just get the parts you need in the box. There's only one spare part, which is an extra helmeted head, in case you don't want to build them with the unhelmeted head, as I've used for one of my guys. And let's begin by looking at these miniatures. Now, first thing to note, these are Terminators but they are mounted on 50 millimeter bases. So these are much larger than your standard Terminator Marines that we've previously seen in Warhammer 40,000. So do not be deceived by their size. As is always the case with custodian miniatures we've seen thus far, these guys have got excellent detailing and they are filigree fantastic. We've got these greaves, which have got the same sort of styling as we saw on the Custodian Dreadnoughts and the Telamon Heavy Dreadnought. You've got a belt buckle, you've got a chest design, you've got details um, on the armoured collar. These upper thigh side plates have got detailing as well. You've got an Imperial Eagle on the inner shoulder pad or the inner pauldron on both sides. And then the outer pauldrons. Here we've got this brilliant swooping bas relief eagle, which is a a stunning looking detail if there ever was one. Combined with this sort of eight pointed star device, whereas on the opposing side, the shoulder pad is bifurcated by this ridge and have two separate plain armor surfaces. So detailing wise, these are great miniatures. So here we have the weapon that gives these guys their really unique nature, which is the Infernus Firepike. Anyone who's seen the artwork from the Horus Heresy card game from back in the mid 2000s or any of the collected visions or the vision series of Horus Heresy art books by Black Library will undoubtedly have seen some of the inimitable artwork by Adrian Smith depicting the custodians and this is one of the weapons that they carried. So yeah, very distinctive look. There's this eagle mounted in front of a trigger guard. I had a conversation with the sculptor of these miniatures, which is Will Hayes, the dreadnought man as I call him, and he said he wanted to sculpt the eagles on the barrel of the flamethrower as per Adrian Smith's artwork, but he was told he wasn't allowed to, so he kind of wanted to keep that eagle detail, so he moved it up to the trigger guard instead. I don't know quite that why that is. It might be in production, it might be that they have sort of rules around weapons so uh, you can see what a weapon is i don't know but yeah fantastic looking model they're really impressively detailed if we look at the second of these custodians each torso belt buckle and thigh armor guards are unique and different so they're all different so there's no repetition and that's a really nice feature that allows you to give each custodian a unique feel, which is very much with their description. You know, every custodian is a uniquely crafted warrior of superlative capabilities. We've got the same sort of power pack designs we've seen on the standard custodians and indeed their Contemptor and Telemon Dreadnoughts. Each custodian has got a plume. There's two different plume designs. This is a first and that's a second. And I'll come back to that when I talk about the actual build. Consistent helmet design with the previous Asian Dreadnoughts, really good looking helmet. And then the helmet's also encased by this eagle cowling type design as well, which is another really cool feature. And that's very faithful to the Agent Smith artwork, very nicely uh, executed. Then if we take a look at the final, the Aquilon Terminators, this is another pose again. 
was quite pleased how I got this guy positioned as he's lunging forward to grab something with his power gauntlet. As well as all the other details, you get a Misericordia power knife, which is a separate piece. It sits well either here or here, either side of the belt buckle. Yeah, that's a nice, uh, a nice touch as well, and helps you add to the individuality of the model's poses through how you position those. Very good. Yes, yeah, so there's a look around the actual miniatures. Fantastic detailing and just what you would expect of the custodians. The armor design is something unique, although it's in the description in Book 7 Inferno, it's described as being based around the Cataphracti Pattern Terminator armor. The pauldrons are sort of slimmed down a bit in size compared to standard Cataphracti, but if you do a literal size comparison, one for one, they're still huge shoulder pads. I quite like how Will Hayes has reproportioned these in terms of shoulder pads. It fits with the artwork and it fits with custodians that have come before them. So yeah, I, I, I like all the styling on these. I haven't got any complaints at all. One final thing just to look at, you do get this rather cool custodian unhelmeted head. who looks like he's yelling orders or shouting a challenge perhaps. Very nice. Right, so let's talk about the kit quality and the build. Okay, kit quality. Those of you who remember my out of the pack review of these where I got them out of the pack originally will recall that I picked out a number of faults with these models. So there are, there are two main categories. There were some parts that had mold slippage and we can see examples of where I've repaired that on this power talon. And some of those slips were quite bad and across fine details. There was an awful lot of air bubbling on these, more than should be acceptable, which to me suggests that the production was being rushed. The only reason you get air bubbles in models like these is because the moulds haven't been vibrated long enough once the resin has been poured to allow all the air bubbles to work out. Some evidence of that and that coupled with the mould slips. These were bought as early release miniatures, so these were the first batch that Ford Raw produced and I was disappointed by the quality of them. And to be quite honest, that's why it's taken me so long to get to the review, because there was so much work to do on them, actually filling the parts, cleaning off the mold slips, finding all those air bubbles and sorting them out. It puts you off pushing your project forward. And you know, I kind of came back to them eventually once I got a bit of motivation back and finished them, but that was disappointing and far below what I would expect for a brand new model. Other issues in terms of production quality, all of the Infernus Fire Pikes had significant warping. Now, as you can probably see from my models, I've straightened those warps out. I'm never too bothered about straightening warps out on things like gun barrels because they tend to work quite well. But I can see that if you're less experienced as a modeler, that could be quite intimidating and quite off-putting to do. And again, it's evidence of production being done too quick because the only reason the barrels are warped is because when you pour resin and it sets, there is an exothermic reaction and... Of course, when resin gets softened, it becomes pliable even when it's set. And what's happening is they've been taken out of the moulds before they've been able to cool. And that's why there was so much warping. And the warping was also prevalent on the claws of the Solarite power talons. And again, to me, that's just evidence that the production is just being rushed and they're not taking as much time and care over it as they should do. So yeah, again, you know, disappointing. The Solarite power talons were particularly tricky to work the bends out of. You know, you've got to be very careful not to damage them and also just to get them all straight as well, as you can see there. So yeah, so from my point of view, from this example, more care needed to be taken with production to allow parts to cool more, air bubbles to be worked out as well. So in terms of a brand new kit from Forge Wall, in terms of quality, these are definitely on the bottom end of what I've seen. Um, I've seen worse, but they're certainly far from the best I've seen. So once we move past working out the faults on these models, what were they like to build? Well, actually, they were really nice to build. They were very enjoyable to build. They basically, they all stick together. The instructions you get are nice and clear. The only bit of pinning I did, and I would highly recommend anyone does this, is I put a pin in the plume and into the back of the Terminator because those are quite fragile and mine are absolutely solid and probably stronger than the torso. The plumes offer interesting possibilities for reposing. They all come in quite sort of, we might say, moving position. So I heated this one up and just draped it down because the pose looks like he stood. So I did that to, you know, just adapt how the 
plumes are and this one I think I've bent it the opposite direction as you can see there and then this one which is the same as the one I just showed you I bent the other way again so that is a nice feature and you can really add character to them by bending those plumes and I found that the plumes manipulated very well under heat into new positions so that was good other points around assembly, I wasn't very keen on the stock poses of the legs and I've done rework on every set of legs and I did a video where I demonstrated this to get them in what I feel are better looking, more natural poses. And I was happy with where I got them to, so I guess that's the advantage, isn't it, of working with a resin model, you can repose them. Although it would have been nice to have got a set of legs which was static and just stood like this, and more of just even a straight stood pose. I don't think there's much else to say around the construction. Apart from pinning the plumes and reposing the legs, that was pretty much it. I think I might have re-bent this arm a bit. I might have bent this arm up a bit to put more of a bend in the elbow and maybe a little bit of movement on the flamethrower. You know, clearly at the end of the day, with a lot of work in preparation on this particular kit, I got to a good result. If I hadn't have had all those quality issues, I would have been able to assemble these really quite quickly. It would have been a fun, enjoyable project instead of a medium size, tedious project to do. That's enough about the construction and the quality. Let's now move on and do a series of size comparisons. So we shall spread these guys out a bit. Start with an Astartes. Start with an Astartes, that's good, isn't it? Right, here we have one of my Iron Hands Tactical Support Legionnaires armed with the awesome looking Volkite Caliver Heavy Energy Rifle. Hmm, these Aquilon Terminators make Astartes look tiny. Yes, so very small for your standard Astartes. You know, GW likes gigantism and, uh, well, they certainly embraced it with these guys. Let's now move up to a standard member of Custodian Guard. And here we've got one of my Sagittarium Guards. So this is the Games Workshop plastic kit with the Forge World conversion components. And these are very nicely scaled against these Terminators. The Terminators are a little bit taller if you're looking at head to foot than the standard Custodian. I think they've been very nicely scaled to these troops. That's a really good look to see how consistent they are. Who else shall we have? Shall we have, yeah, let's have Custodian Hero. So the Astartes is gonna get relegated to the end. Okay, here we've got Ixian Hale, the Tribune, one of the most stunning miniatures Forge World has done in the Heresy, in my regard. That's beautifully scaled as well, and that just corresponds to the fact that this guy scales very well to that guy. Okay, let's take the infantry away, and we'll move to some walkers. Right, let's start with something standard Dreadnought sized. So, here we have a Castellax Battle Automata, armed with a Mauler Bolt Cannon, and a pair of Flamers. Obviously the Castellax is bigger, but it doesn't dwarf them as much as all that. They look pretty well sized next to this large battle robot. And now let's have something that's more likely to be immediately friendly to them on the battlefield in the form of a companion dreadnought. And this is the Contemptor Achilles dreadnought. And this is very kindly painted for me by Broken Minis. Yeah, check out his channel. So probably about Hmm, maybe he, somewhere around half to 60% of the height of a custodian. So I think the takeaway on that is these are the largest Terminators ever produced in a Games Workshop or Forge or Line. They are very big. Okay, so now let's move on and talk about tactics and rules for these guys in the Horus Heresy. So these are 7th edition rules and my reference material is Horus Heresy Book 7 Inferno. Let's start with the stats. Legio Custodes Aquilan Terminator Squad is an elite choice and for 225 points you get 3 Aquilon Terminators. Their profile is a standard custodian profile, which is weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength and toughness are all five, two wounds, initiative five, three attacks, leadership value of nine and a saving throw of two plus. So the unit is three equivalent terminators, they are infantry and they are all characters, so important to remember from the challenge perspective, these guys can challenge anyone and everyone and be challenged back, but I think it probably works in their favor most of the time. And the war gear for the squad is a Lastrum Storm Bolter, a Solarite Power Gauntlet, a Misericordia, and a Quillon Terminator Armor. Special rules are Legio Custodes, Bulky, and Crusader. Dedicated transport option. As these are bulky, they take up two transport slots, and you're allowed to purchase them a Cronus Grav Carrier as a dedicated transport, as long as the squad is six or fewer models in number. 
So that is a great choice, particularly for these guys, how they're armed, and we'll come to that soon. What are the options? So you can take up to seven additional Aquilon Terminators at 75 points each. You can exchange a Solarite Power Gauntlet for a Solarite Power Talon for free. Okay, so we're still at 225 points. Any model, so it doesn't have to be the whole squad, but any model can replace a Lastrum Storm Bolter for one of the following. A twin-linked Adrathic Destructor for 15 points, or an Infernus Firepike for 15 points. So to arm these as they are, extra 45 points, we're now costing 270 points. And you can finally equip the entire squad with teleportation transponders at 5 points each and array shrikes at 2 points each. So essentially you're looking at 270 points for 3 custodians. Just to go back to the options there, because any custodian can equip either the power talent or the fire pipe separately. These are great set of miniatures to buy this set and then the other set which comes with the Lastrum Storm Bolters and the Adrathic Destructors to be able to swap and change your weapons around and that's a good way of making them more tactically flexible or you can just kit them out as they are here and this gives custodians a useful capability for dealing with swarm enemies. A lot of custodian weapons are very aligned for fighting Astartes so more numerous but still good quality opponents these guys, they're very well armed for fighting Astartes, but they're also well armed for fighting more numerous troops, such as the Solar Auxilia or Militia opponents. And against those, these guys are going to be pretty devastating, I think. And the reason for that is the way their weapons work. Now, let's look at these. So let's consider the Solarite Power Talon first. This is a melee weapon, and it's strength plus one, and its AP is three, and it has a host of special rules. Melee, Shred, Specialist Weapon and Master Crafted. Now, important to consider what this means, because kitting your guys out with Power Talons does attenuate some of their melee capabilities, and you need to understand that to make sure you buy these at the correct time, shall we say, or use them tactically in the right situation. The important thing there is the Specialist Weapon, and that means they can't then use the Misericordia, unless someone's seen an errata for it, for an extra attack. So these guys are always fighting at one lower attacks. An Aquilum armed with the Power Gauntlets because that isn't a specialist weapon, so you can always get an extra attack. So these guys do sacrifice some attacks. However, plus one strength puts them on strength six, so you're wounding a Startes on a two plus with a reroll, so that's very potent. And it's not unwieldy, so you're fighting at initiative. And it's also master crafted, so you can reroll one miss per weapon per turn. Brilliant. That means these guys can take on any power armored troops or weaker in melee and rip them to pieces. So although you don't have as many attacks as normal custodians, you are striking sooner. You're pretty much striking first all the time because they're initiative five. And because of pertinatural skill, it means that most of the time, unless you're fighting a Praetor, you'll be striking first. So yeah, very potent in melee. They're going to absolutely shred standard Astartes and anyone wearing powered armor. Word of warning though is you don't want to get these bogged down fighting terminators in melee because the AP of three means our attacks are going to be bouncing off a heavy armor all the time. Because of your fewer attacks, you're either going to get tar pitted or if those terminators have any form of AP two weapon, you're gonna lose. Even given your wounds and skill, I think you're still gonna lose. But these guys are really kitted out for fighting Astartes and soft opponents. And that brings us to the Infernus Firepike. Now the Infernus Firepike is one of those very rare infantry weapons with the Torrent Rule, which is brilliant. Anyone who's ever played Mechanicum with Myrmidons and Irradiation Engines will appreciate how deadly they are. These aren't as deadly as Irradiation Engines, but they're still very good. It's a template weapon, it's Strength 6 and AP 6, and it's Heavy 1 and it's Torrent. So Torrent gives you 12 inches range to the tip of the template, and then you've got the eight inch length of the flame template as well. So you can hit targets up to 20 inches away. Anything closer, then you're just gonna score a whole host of hits. These guys, you could easily score 20 hits on a dense bunch of enemy troops, be them Marines, militia, or whatever. And that's the strength of these. That's the ability to score high numbers of high strength hits. So fighting anything other than enemy custodians or Mechanicum means that you're going to be wounding on twos. The AP of six isn't going to be any normal armor, However, even against powered armor, the number of hits you can score is going to be phenomenal. 
and that's what's going to do the damage. These are kind of an unusual part of the custodian list because it actually gives you a template weapon, which custodians generally lack. They don't have many template weapon options. Yeah, so great for fighting standard marines, not good against enemy terminators or troop types wearing artificer armor because you're not going to be able to score the damage with either their flamer or their power talent. So yeah, you want to watch out against those. And I suppose that in a way also makes these custodians, while they're still very effective and powerful on the field, I think they're not as overbearingly powerful and overbearingly universally good against everything as it, say the standard custodian squad and if you're wanting to play games using the points as they're published at the moment these are one of the shall we say kinder options on your opponent i think these guys and the sagittarium guard and the sisters of silence are a good way to build up a custodian force without making it overbearingly powerful because the balance isn't particularly good on the list at the moment it's underpointed in the main however i think these guys are a fairer choice at the published points. So just to return to a point I made earlier, these guys are pretty short range, maximum range of 20. So to optimize them in battle means you really want some sort of transport. The Cronus is a great choice, get them in, and then the Cronus can float off and give fire support. You can teleport them in. The access to teleport to transponders is very handy in that regard. And then finally, these will be great to turn up in the Orion dropship if you're playing larger games. A great party package for the Orion is three of these guys, three other Aquilon Terminators with Adrathic Destructors or Lastrum Storm Bolters accompanied by a hero. And then also you stick a Dreadnought in, one of the Contemptor Dreadnoughts in, and that is a very powerful assault package that the Orion dropship can deliver. And if you wanted to go with more flamethrower guys, then the Orion has some good anti-armor capabilities to offset their lack of AP2 weapons as well. So that's a, another consideration, as would be taking an Achilles Contemptor, a Contemptor Achilles, and equipping it with a Laz Pulsar, because that, again, it gives you that all-important AP2 weapon. Even better, stick a couple of Adrathic Destructors on the Contemptor, you know, just to offset their lack of AP2 weapons, and that makes them a really sound package. There you have it then. That is my review of Legio Custodes, a Quillon Terminators armed with Infernus Fire Pikes and Solarite Power Talons. A very attractive looking set of models from Forge World. So I've shared lots of views and opinions there. I'll be very interested to hear what you think about all the things I've said, both in terms of models, the kit quality. You know, if you've bought these, how did you find your kit quality? Did you find it really good? Or like myself, did you encounter some issues? Then finally, what are your thoughts around the tactical uses of these guys in 7th edition Horus Heresy games? But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.